There is a scary fact that many Christians ignore. Satan does not fear all Christians equally. In fact, some Christians are so spiritually weak that they hardly constitute a challenge to the kingdom of darkness. However, there is a remnant, an army of believers who strike fear into the heart of the enemy. These are not typical churchgoers. These are soldiers who understand their rights in Christ, are unwavering in their faith, and confront the enemy without hesitation. The devil recognizes them by name and trembles whenever they rise. In today's video, we will look at the five sorts of Christians that Satan dread the most and how you might become one of them. Number one, Christians who understand their rights. Satan fears the first type of Christian, one who is completely aware of their rights and spiritual authority. Typically, Satan prefers those who are afraid and fragile. In Hosea 4 verse 6, God says, Why are people destroyed for a lack of knowledge? Satan wants you to be unconscious of your own authority. When Jesus looks at a group of believers, he generally targets those who are most fearful or vulnerable. This is why a lion is more likely to attack a victim that flees than a prey that faces it directly. The devil thrives on intimidation. If he threatens you but realizes that you are showing signs of fear, he will assault you. When he comes across a believer who understands their place and remains firm, Satan will usually shun them. The problem is that far too many Christians appear timid or fearful, which Satan enjoys. An atheist who is courageous and not afraid of the devil is far more powerful than a believer who is fearful or afraid. While Jesus was fasting for forty days and forty nights, Satan contacted him in the wilderness to tempt him. Naturally, anyone in this situation would have been scared. Instead of fleeing, Jesus chose to stand his ground and confront Satan, knowing that the demon could not harm him. This is the mindset that God wants you to have. In Luke 10 verse 19, Jesus remarked, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. The Greek term meaning power in this verse is exousia. This is delegated power. This is the power that grants you control over the forces of evil. So, the next time the devil attempts to scare you, don't flee. Instead, show him that you understand who you are in Christ. Second, Satan is afraid of a Christian who refuses to be moved. Satan fears the second sort of Christian the most. Those who remain consistent regardless of their circumstances. Satan may occasionally bring up troubles in your life to elicit a response from you. For example, Satan could harm your career or health in order to cause you to abandon trust in God. He tried this with Job, believing that the great loss would cause him to curse God. However, the Bible states in Job 1 verse 22 that Job neither sinned nor charged God foolishly. Satan was horrified by Job's unwavering determination in the face of hardship. Many often, when a believer is confronted with a difficult situation, instead of placing their trust in God, they begin to blame or complain. When you start doing this, you are basically giving the opposition an advantage over you. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 10 states, Do not murmur as some of them murmured. And they were destroyed by the destroyer. The Bible states that some people complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. When the enemy attacks, begin to worship God instead of complaining. Act as if what he's doing has no effect on you because the devil enjoys seeing how you react to his attacks. But when he sees you aren't moved, it bothers him even more. Number 3. Believers who continue to profess Jesus as Lord Similar to the preceding argument, Satan is scared of believers who stick to their statement of faith. Satan enjoys those who become negative and admit negative things. However, when you are assaulted and continue to preach God's word, the devil is almost unable to overcome you. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 verse 2, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful who promised. The word profession is derived from the Greek homologia, which literally means saying the same thing. In this example, expressing what God says about our predicament. This is underlined further in Revelation 12 verse 11, which reads, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The term for witness here is martyria, which refers to proof offered or a record kept. This entails continuously testifying to God's goodness despite the circumstances. These believers recognize that their words have creative power, just as God's do. 
They remain steadfast in their belief that Jesus is Lord, regardless of the circumstances. So even amid adverse circumstances, you refuse to believe God has abandoned you. Number four, Christians who confront him. Satan fears the fourth category of believer, those who take the offense in spiritual warfare. You see, in God's kingdom, there are some who do not flee from the enemy. They actually confront him. When they see something out of the ordinary in their lives, they rush to the battle gates and defeat Satan. Sometimes the greatest method to deal with an opponent is to confront him rather than avoid him. Pray, but only by approaching him directly. If you are dealing with a lot of unfavorable situations in your life, you may need to address them directly through prayer. Some people avoid praying. When you invite them to attend church and pray about their condition, they just avoid it, despite the fact that they are clearly under attack. According to James 4 verse 7, Submit yourselves to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The Greek word for resist here is anthistemi, which means to set oneself against or withstand. It's a military term that means vigorous opposition, not passive resistance. These believers recognize that spiritual warfare frequently necessitates direct confrontation through prayer and the declaration of God's word. In Matthew 4, Jesus did not avoid confrontation. He confronted it full on with the word of God. When Satan tempted him, Jesus responded with, It is written, illustrating the power of confronting the enemy with scripture. Number 5. Prayer Warriors the fifth sort of Christian that Satan fears is one who has developed a strong prayer practice. These believers comprehend what Paul meant in Ephesians 6 verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and keeping watch with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The Greek term for prayer is prosushi, which denotes a prayer directed directly to God. These believers have learned to pray with authority, realizing that prayer is more than just asking God for things. It is also about spiritual warfare. They follow Daniel's example, who continued to pray three times a day even after it was declared forbidden. Daniel 6 verse 10 states, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to his God as he did four times. So, if you want to become a Christian, Satan warns you, you must do five things. First, carefully consider the term. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, we are informed, study to present yourself acceptable unto God, a workman who should not be ashamed, correctly dividing the word of truth. To learn how to wield your power, you must first study God's word properly. Second, grow in your faith. According to Romans 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing through God's word. Regular exposure to God's Word promotes faith and confidence in your spiritual authority. Third, practice standing firm. Ephesians 6 verse 13 says, Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done, stand. The Greek word for stand is histomy, which implies to remain immovable, ready. Fourthly, exercise your authority. Start small, but be consistent in exercising your spiritual authority. Command sickness to leave your body, speak peace to troubled situations, and declare God's promises over your life. Lastly, maintain a strong prayer life. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Make prayer a lifestyle, not just an activity. Becoming the type of Christian that Satan fears isn't about being perfect. It's about being persistent in your faith and growing in your understanding of who you are in Christ. It's about standing firm on God's Word maintaining your confession of faith, confronting spiritual battles head-on, and developing a powerful prayer life. Remember, 1 John 4 verse 4 declares, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. This isn't just a nice saying. It's a spiritual reality that these types of Christians have learned to live in. As you apply these principles and grow in these areas, you'll find yourself becoming more and more the type of believer that makes the enemy tremble. Not because of who you are, but because of whose you are and the authority he has given you. Let us now go into a moment of prayer, trusting God to answer us. Heavenly Father, I come before you acknowledging your greatness and your power. I thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, 
I lift up everyone listening right now, and I ask that you would empower them with the characteristics that strike fear into the heart of the enemy. Father, I pray that you would give them a deep revelation of who they are in Christ, that they may know their authority and stand firm in the face of every attack. Your word says in the book of Luke 10 verse 19 that you have given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Lord, I declare that this listener walks in that authority. They are bold, courageous, and not intimidated by the schemes of the enemy. Lord, I ask that you would make them unshakable, just as Job did not charge you foolishly in the midst of his trials. I pray that this listener will stand firm, unmoved by the circumstances around them. Your word says in the book of Romans 8 verse 28 that all things work together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. I declare that they will trust in your goodness even when the situation looks bleak. Father, I thank you for the power of confession. Your word says in the book of Revelation 12 verse 11 that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I declare that this listener will continue to confess your word even in the face of attacks. No weapon formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against them in judgment they shall condemn, as it is written in the book of Isaiah 54, verse 17. Lord, I pray for boldness to confront the enemy. Your word says in the book of James 4, verse 7, that when we resist the devil, he will flee. I declare that this listener will rise up in prayer, confronting every work of the enemy, pulling down strongholds, and declaring victory in Jesus' name. They will not shrink back in fear, but will push forward in faith, knowing that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world, as written in the book of 1 John 4 verse 4. Finally, Father, I pray for a spirit of humility and submission. Your word says in the book of James 4 verse 6 that you resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. I ask that you would give this listener the grace to walk in humility, fully surrendered to your will. As they submit to you, Lord, I pray that you would cover them with your protection, that no weapon of the enemy would be able to penetrate the shield of faith that surrounds them. Lord, I thank you for the victory that we have in Christ. I declare that this listener is more than a conqueror through him who loved us. As it is written in the book of Romans 8 verse 37, I speak life, strength, and victory over them right now. Every plan of the enemy is canceled, every attack is thwarted, and every lie is exposed. I declare that they are blessed beyond measure, for your word says in the book of Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I confess that they walk in the fullness of these blessings, recognizing that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, as stated in the book of James 1 verse 17, Lord, I pray that no weapon fashioned against them shall prosper. Every evil thing plotted against them is rooted up. Just as you reversed every curse placed against the children of Israel, so shall you reverse every curse against your child listening to me right now. I command every curse spoken over them to be revoked in Jesus' name. Father, I seal this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus, now knowing that you are faithful to complete the good work you have begun in them. I thank you that their lives will be a testimony of your power and grace. Let them walk in victory all the days of their life. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you love our videos, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus.